Today I'm going to be doing production work on the Morgan injection molding press. Welcome to another episode. I have a couple things in this episode. The first is I made a few more molds. I don't have a lot of uh, video on that. But the other thing is that I discovered on my milling machine I was using the wrong tip on my Heimer. So I am going to replace the tip uh, and use the imperial one instead of the metric one. Another thing is I was having problems last time with uh, streaks in the plastic and discovered that that is a result of moisture in the pellets. So I'm going to take care of that and dry the plastic so that I won't have any moisture in the plastic. And then the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a set of parts. So uh, let's get started. On my last injection mold, I discovered that uh, the dimensions weren't quite right. And when I looked more carefully, I discovered I had the metric tip on there instead of the imperial tip. So I've put the imperial tip on now with a uh, tenths indicator. And now what I want to do is move the X and the Z uh, until I'm right in the middle of the, the ball. So I'm going to start with the X and go back and forth until I get to the maximum. So it looks like about there. And then I'm going to do the same in Z. Okay, so now I'm perfectly centered on the ball. And what I'm going to do is move back the Y to the, so we're at zero. And then what I'm going to do is spin this and you can see it's definitely not um, centered. So first I'm going to do front to back. That's actually not too bad. So if I look here, that's uh, one thousandths uh, difference. So what I want to do is move the needle this way. And I've put this in here and I'll see which way it goes. Okay, so I have to loosen this one first. It looks like. Okay, so now I'll try to tighten this one. Okay, so I split the difference. And so if I go between the front and the back, it's pretty close. So now I'm going to do side to side. So here I need to go this way, which means I need to loosen this one first. So I'll try that position. And you can see already I'm a lot closer, but it means I need to loosen this one just a little bit. And then move this one a little bit more. So let's try that. Okay, and I'm going to keep going back and forth and doing this until I get this completely uh, the run out to uh, as small as I can. Okay, after a few minutes, and actually it wasn't as many as I thought, um, <laughs> it's not moving at all, so. But you can see that it does in fact move. Uh, if I tap on it. So I've got this now concentric to within, or I should say the run out to, uh, you know, less than a tenth of an inch, which is, uh, I mean, one, less than one ten thousandth of an inch, which is, you know, wonderful. So I'm re now ready to use that. This is just a reminder, whenever you change the tip on your Heimer, uh, make sure you adjust it so that uh, you eliminate the run out. For this second out of three molds, I decided to do a couple things different. Uh, one thing is for the finishing pass. I decided to use a step rover of only three thousandths of an inch to see how close that got me to a finish that was pretty close to gloss or something like that without having to do any uh, sanding or hand finishing. The other thing that I decided to do, uh, which you're seeing here, is I uh, used a small 1 32nd inch ball end mill to mill the sides of the cavity starting at the top and moving down. And that 
uh, gives me a really smooth finish. Another mold half finished. I changed the step over on this to be three thousandths of an inch to see if it would make a difference in uh, the surface finish. And you can, uh, you can still see the pattern. I'm uh, curious to see if this pattern shows up when I injection mold it. And if it does, I'm going to have to polish this. But the pattern is probably so fine that it will take very little polishing to uh, finish it up. And then of course we have the alignment in the back for uh, putting it on the riser. This is cutting the gate on the back side with a 1 32nd inch end mill. One of the things I did is to slow the feed rate down quite a bit. The idea is that when it has uh, really small circles it's traveling. The uh, outer circumference has a much higher feed rate than at the center and so you have to cut the feed rate your programming which is based on the center of the cutter and so it's not screaming the way that it was before. The pins are a little bit uh, tighter than I'd like. Uh, they might loosen up a little bit but um, actually I think they will because I, I heard some suction because it's probably still a little bit wet. Um, one of the things about this mold though is that in the previous one, these, uh, this didn't line up. It was off by about 20 thousandths roughly. And as I mentioned earlier, it's because I was using the metric tip for the hymer instead of the imperial tip. So that meant when I picked up an edge and flipped it over and then picked up the other edge, I was actually off because of the difference in diameter of the hymer. Last time, I thought this was the injection pressure I didn't read the manual carefully enough because there's actually a supplement. The main manual is the one that I read, but I didn't read the supplement. The supplement describes the additional system that I have with uh, a pilot valve in the, in the back. And it says that this should be between five and seven. So I need to basically set that, I'll put it on six. Set it there, and then it just stays there for the entire time. I don't need to adjust it. Uh, after this. What I do need to adjust, let me take you to the side. This valve goes up to the pilot valve and this is controlling the actual injection pressure. So I've got it pretty high up and so what I want to do is just turn it uh, until I see it go down quite a bit. So I'm gonna, it was up at about uh, 90 or 100. Uh, I'm gonna set it down to 40 as a starting point and then uh, see what the injection looks like when it's at 40 and uh, work my way up. The other thing that I'm going to do is to take the, the speed control here and back it out quite a bit. So basically go back to close to full speed but just with less injection pressure. So that's now all the way out and I'll try that. Now that I have the riser with the locating bolt I can take the injection mold and just put it right there and now it's centered and I can just put the uh, the bushing on top. There it is. And now I'm going to adjust the uh, the height uh, like I did before. Basically turning a, a crank. First of all, it's probably too high. I'm going to get rid of the, there's a little bit of plastic here. So I'm going to get rid of that and then Yep, too high. So I'll drop it down. I'll try a few turns first and see how it is. Okay, so now I need to go up a little bit. Okay, looking at it, here, let me show you. So I'm watching this mechanism here, and I want it to go over center. And you can see it doesn't quite go over center. So I'll drop it down half a turn, a quarter turn. 
and then give it a try again to see if it goes over center. Yep, and that's the uh, perfect uh, setting that I want. So let's give it a try. I can see already that it's uh, not a complete shot, um, but you know, it's a start. So what I'll do is I'll put it back together, put it back on, and I'm gonna increase the, the pressure to probably 50 and give it a try again. All right, I'll move it up to 50 and see how that does. Punk. All right, let's uh, inject. And I'm not using the automatic because I want to make sure I give it the maximum time to fill. Once I get things figured out, then I'll try the uh, timer. And that's a uh, complete shot. So let's see how easy it is to get it out. It should be easy with the, the new approach that I, yep. And it comes out very, very easily. So good to go. I was getting a lot of uh, streaking, as you can see here. And I was wondering what this was. And uh, what I discovered is that this is a result of moisture in the pellets. So I dried the pellets in a toaster oven at uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, about four to five hours. I dried the plastic from last time and so I'm putting in this uh, purging, not sure what to call it, basically it's a cylinder with a nozzle on top. So I'm gonna fill up the uh, hopper again and then give it another purging cycle. Okay, here we go. And now, when I open this, you'll see there's quite a bit of plastic inside. And then I uh, put in a little bit of plastic at the top, which I know you can't see. Okay. Then I uh, twist this off and just give it a quick bang on there to loosen it, turn it over and dump it into the trash. And then this just turns over like so. A quick release and there is a, a part. So it's turning out much better than it did before. As you saw, the, the parts turned out really well. Let me uh, show you a close up of uh, one of them. And you can see that the, the finish is really nice. There's no streaking at all in the plastic. Uh, it's coming out perfect. So drying the plastic at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, two to four hours as suggested. Took care of all the problems, it works beautifully, so I'm really happy with that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.